Each year, more than 2 billion kilograms of sheep's wool are produced worldwide. To meet this demand, more than 1.5 million sheep need to be sheared. But how is an animal's hair turned into one of the world's most coveted fabrics? To find out, let's travel to New Zealand, the third largest wool producing country in the world. Sheep's wool is one of the most valued natural fibres in the world, famous for its softness, warmth and versatility. Additionally, it is a renewable resource, as sheep naturally produce wool every year, which is harvested through shearing. This process is typically done once or twice a year, just before the warm seasons, so that the sheep do not suffer from the heat and their wool has time to regrow before winter. So how is sheep's wool processed? The process begins by gathering the sheep in pens, where their health is checked and they are grouped according to the quality and colour of their wool. Then, shearers, specialised workers, use electric machines to remove the wool with skill and care, aiming to obtain high quality fibres without harming the animals. An experienced shearer can shear up to 250 sheep in a single day spending between one and two minutes on each one. The key is in how they hold the sheep, keeping them comfortable and relaxed, which greatly facilitates the task. In New Zealand, for example, shearing always starts with the belly wool, which is usually short and somewhat stained, and then moves on to the back wool. This first layer is set aside as it has lower value. Once removed, the shearer focuses on the higher quality wool, which is white and clean. They start from the base and move towards the back and sides, moving with precision, even in areas where they must rely on touch to guide themselves. At the next step, the shearer performs what is known as the long pass, a cut that runs the entire length of the sheep's spine, removing the wool in a continuous line. Then they move towards the head, removing the last wool around the face. It is crucial that this area, including the ears and eyes, is well cleared to avoid what is called wool blindness, which occurs when strands partially cover the sheep's vision. After finishing one sheep, the shearer automatically moves on to the next, until completing hundreds of sheep throughout the day, earning about $2 for each one. After shearing, the fleece is placed on a sorting table where less desirable sections, such as stained areas or those with vegetation remnants, are removed. Finally, the clean wool is rolled and packed into large bales, ready for transport. Upon completing the shearing process, not only is high quality wool obtained, but the sheep are also prepared to face the temperatures of the next season. These bales of wool are sent to cleaning and processing plants, where each bale is removed from its packaging and carefully spread out to optimise cleaning. In this initial stage, the wool passes through a special machine that opens and airs it to remove small particles of dirt or vegetation, reducing dirt before washing and thereby reducing water consumption in the subsequent stages. Workers inspect the wool to detect and remove any contaminants that may have remained before it moves on to the next process. The opening machine, equipped with teeth and open grates, gently shakes the wool, allowing dirt to fall off. This movement also helps to separate the fibres into sections, ensuring that the wool is free of soil residues before continuing. Next, the wool is submerged in a series of tubs with hot water at temperatures between 77 and 82 degrees Celsius, and a small amount of soap is added to eliminate grease and remaining impurities. Each tub is equipped with a pressing system that reduces the amount of dirty water between each washing stage. This system allows clean water to flow from the last tub to the first, thus maintaining the cleaning process in continuous operation around the clock, ensuring impurity-free wool ready for the next step in its processing. In the wool cleaning process, the first three tubs are filled with soapy water to remove the natural grease from the fibres, while the last three are intended for rinsing. Although it might seem that using more soap results in superior cleaning only the right amount is used here to keep the wool quality intact. This balance in the amount of soap is crucial. Too little, and the wool would not be clean, but too much can leave residues, 
similar to grease, which complicates the process. By the time the wool reaches the fourth tub, the water already looks much clearer. Will it continue to clarify? Yes, by the time the wool reaches the last tub, the water will be clear enough to see through, though not drinkable. This final rinse removes any remaining traces of soap or residues, preparing the wool for the drying stage. Here, the wool is introduced into a large hot air dryer. This equipment uses air heated by steam, driven by large fans that distribute it throughout a rotating drum, maximizing the drying surface. Unlike older flat dryers, the drum system allows for more efficient drying and takes up less space, moving the wool up and down through six large drums. When the wool exits the dryer, it goes through a final inspection where workers check and remove any unwanted fibers, such as strands of another color or small residues. Then the wool passes through two dust removal machines to eliminate any remaining dust before being repacked. Thus, the wool that arrived in large bales now exits the same, but with impeccable cleanliness, ready for its next transformation. In this final stage, each bale of wool is carefully weighed and subjected to moisture and grease analysis to ensure it meets the required quality standards. Then, it is covered and moved to the warehouse, where it awaits shipment to its next destination. Once at the sorting house, the classification process begins. Here, bales are separated and the exact amount of fibre required for each project is measured. With the help of a specialised scale, it is possible to combine different types of wool or colours according to the client's specifications. For example, by mixing natural white wool with dyed black wool, an attractive heather grey tone is obtained. In addition to this blend, the sorting house also helps to restore volume to the fibre, which is often somewhat compressed after packaging, making it fluffy and ready for the carding process. Carding is a key stage where the wool passes through a series of rollers covered with metal bristles that comb and align the fibres. On the last roller, equipped with especially fine bristles, a continuous layer of wool is formed, which is then divided into thin strips. These strips, passing through two rollers, are transformed into soft threads known as roving, marking the first step in creating yarn. The roving strips are taken to a spinning frame where each one is twisted and joined to form a strong, fine yarn. But before this yarn is ready to become fabric, it goes through the winding process, where it is placed on spools, preparing it for the next step, weaving. In the weaving phase, the threads are arranged in two directions. The warp, which forms the base and is usually composed of about two and a half thousand threads, and the weft, which weaves perpendicularly to create the final design. The warp not only gives strength to the fabric, but also, by varying in colour, allows for the creation of unique patterns such as stripes and plaids. Once ready, the warp is transferred to a loom. Each warp thread passes through needles that move up and down to leave space for the weft, which interlaces in a precise movement. In new projects, this step is usually done manually, which can take up to two days of careful work before the loom is completely ready. Already in the loom, the warp and weft interlace with precision, forming the desired fabric. Subsequently, this fabric moves to an inspection section, where, under a powerful light, it is meticulously checked for any imperfections. Any detail is corrected with scissors and tweezers, ensuring the product's quality. If the final fabric will have fringes or tassels, a space is left unweaved so that loose threads remain. These threads are twisted and secured with a special thread. Then, when the fabric is washed, those threads are set, resulting in durable and well-defined fringes. The next step in production is felting. Here, the fabric is intentionally shrunk using hot water and agitation which allows the fibres to compact, resulting in a denser and warmer material. During this process, the pieces are also washed with special detergents that soften the wool. 
Additional treatments can even be applied to make it moth resistant and, in some cases, machine washable, which increases its durability and facilitates care. For single colour blankets, dyeing is performed after weaving, allowing colours to be adjusted according to the specific demands of each season or client. After felting or dyeing, the fabric moves to a stage called scalping. This process, similar to carding, uses rollers covered with metal bristles that smooth the fabric and create small air pockets within the fibre, increasing the thermal insulation capacity of the blankets, making them warmer and lighter at the same time. Finally, the fabric arrives at the sewing plant, where it is carefully cut into individual units such as blankets, scarves or accessories, according to the desired design. The edges of each piece are finished with precise stitching, which not only improves their appearance, but also their durability. In this stage, labels are also attached, and a final quality inspection is carried out. Thus, after a complex process and up to 10 days of detailed work, each product is ready to bring comfort and style to those who use it. And that's how wool is produced in industrial quantities. Tell me, what did you think of the process? Let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed the video, click the like button and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. In the windows you'll see next, there are more videos that might catch your attention. Don't miss them. See you next time.